evening. Good evening. Good evening and welcome. Amen. Welcome to God's Tabernacle of Praise Baptist Church on a study with the pastor. So glad to have you tune in tonight to be a part of this reading of the word. There's nothing like reading the word. We must all become readers of the word so that we can digest this word and God can give us revelation of this word and we can utilize this word in our everyday. So I'm glad to have you tune in. I pray that this word will bless you tonight. We're beginning the book of James. The book of James. He said that the author is uncertain, but um, it is believed that it's the brother of Jesus, James, that wrote this book. And it is not actually in controversial uh, uh, with Paul's letter. Um, but it is uh, Paul and, and he are on the same page uh, with works and faith. With works and faith. So if you would turn your Bibles to the book of James. Father, we come to thank you for the opportunity to study again this your word. And Father, as we study tonight, give us the revelation of it that we may be able to utilize it in our everyday. We recognize that we must walk in this word on a daily basis, but this word is a blessing to us daily as we utilize it in our everyday. We give ourselves to you that you may use us as you will. We trust you with everything because you are our everything. Without you, we're nothing. But with you, all things are possible to the one that can believe. So bless us tonight, all that hear this word, all that receive this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I'm grateful for those that are here with us in the sanctuary. Brother Carmichael is going to read the first 14 verses uh, in the book of James chapter 1. The book of James, chapter 1, Brother Carmichael, going to read the first 14 verses for us. James, chapter 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it our joy when ye fall into divers temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patient. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, and abrade it not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that waveth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. But let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That the brother low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withered the grass, and the flower thereof followed, and the grace of the fashion of it perish. So also shall the rich man fade away in his way. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. For when he is a tribe, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Amen. This is a powerful, powerful book. And this brought off with a powerful, powerful chapter. Uh, in this chapter, he talks about the value of trials. You know, a lot of us in our, in, our, in our humanness want to go through anything. But if we look at everything, it is through the going through that we grow. And so he says after he gives his greeting to the 12 tribes, and after he blessed the Lord, he tells us that we should count it all joy when we go through trials or when we fall into divers temptation. He says, because doing this or knowing this, going through this, 
will work our patience, will cause our faith to work patience. If we have faith to endure, it will work patience. And then it said, when patience has had uh, its finished work, we will be complete or made whole, wanting nothing. That we will, we will have uh, weathered the trial and we're stronger for it. Then we can encourage others to hold fast to your confession of faith. He also, after he gives us the value of the trial, he talks about the source of wisdom. Because he says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men literally and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. He said, if you like wisdom, understanding, ask God. And God will give you the wisdom and understanding to be able to know the what, the why, and the how of every matter. He says, it is a way that you must ask, though, right? It's a way that you must ask for the wisdom. And, and he tells us that in the sixth verse, but he said, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. So when you ask, you got to hold fast to your confession of faith. You got to hold fast to your confession of faith and make sure, I cut it on, and make sure that, that it is, um, I got off my thought, and make sure that your faith holds fast. He says, when you ask, don't begin to doubt. Don't waver. You must hold fast to what you, that, to that that you ask that God will provide it. He says, for he that wavers is like a wave of the sea with, with the wind and toss. But let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. For a double-minded man is unstable in all his way. So let me encourage you that when you ask the Lord and you ask according to his will, you must hold fast to your confession of faith. Don't let doubt creep in and go to wondering if. I don't know if God's going to do it. I don't, no, he's not. You're not sure what you want. You need to be sure of what you're asking for. So you don't just go asking all willy-nilly. Be sure of what you're asking God for. And then hold fast to that. We need not be wishy-washy Christians. We need to be sound in our doctrine and understand that the God that we serve is an able God. So he says, if you want wisdom, you ask God. And then you must hold fast to your confession of faith. Don't be a doubter. God does work. So don't be a doubter. Don't be a double-minded man. Indecision can mess you up. Well, the day I wanted to, but now I'm not sure. And in our humanness, all of us have been there. All of us have been there. But as we grow in our faith and hold fast our faith, we understand uh, that when God gives us revelation, that we're to hold fast to the revelation that he's given unto us uh, and do not doubt that he will bring to pass the thing that he has said that he will do. He said, let the brother of low degree rejoice in it that he, God will lift them up, that he is exalted. And then he said, the rich in that he is made low. He said, because a flower, he used the analogy of a flower growing. Uh, he said, uh, if the flower flourish in the morning, and then it is soon passed away. Sun comes out. Dried up, it withers and falls off and die. He said, for the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withered the grass and the flower thereof falleth 
and the grace of the fashion of, the, of it perishing, so also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. So we have to understand. Riches, riches, riches is all, rich, rich, being rich is okay when you have the right perspective that you don't put it before God. Don't put it before, or, or, or anything in that matter, don't put it before God. He said, blessed is the man that endured temptation. We go through, but hold fast to your confession of faith. Because he said, blessed is the man that endured temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. And so we have to be able to endure. We are tested in life. Test shows us where we are. God already knows, right? But the test shows us where we are. When we're going through something, it shows us whether we are strong in the thing or holding fast in the thing or we falter. If we falter, we know we need to build our faith. Get up, ask God to forgive us and build our faith that the next, next test will hold fast in it and be strong. So he said, let no man say when he's tempted that, it, uh, uh, that he's not tempted of God. So let me throw something out here. When we said that God brought this on me so that it will make me stop erring in that way. Yes, that thing came upon you. You probably brought it upon you. But God is with you to sustain you through it. He will sustain you through it. So let no man say when he is tempted. I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Catch this. Neither tempted he any man. Comments? Uh, verse 6, Pastor. Uh, mm -hmm. But let him ask in faith. It seems like. You know, we all know that faith is the seventh thing hope for the evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. But we all strive for the eternal life, right? It's almost like our faith being tested. Uh, as Christians, we're going to try to keep walking in that faith and not, you know, the wave is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed around, you know, walking in darkness. You know, we can't see the wind, but it do a whole lot of damage to us. But, but the thing is, we have to keep walking in faith, believing that. God is who he is and what he is in our life. And he, he gave a life for us that we continue to walk in the light, not in the darkness. But sometimes when we lose that, that faith be fighting against the temporal things of man. Sometimes when you know, we not concentrate on the Lord, he can let our mind go blank, just like that. And, and we all know that it doesn't take but a little, little chiller, what the Bible says, a little chiller that the devil to get in there. But we already know that God is a forgiving God. No one is perfect. But we have to keep walking in faith. We have to be believing who he is and what he is in our life. And that's what we have to do. We have to beat that faith and, and take over that temple, that darkness, that temple thing, and our being human being. But that's what we strive to do. And this is what this verse is telling me. Keep faith, keep being concentrated on the Lord doing his will, walking his will in the way, no matter what the thing that we're going through in our life, just keep the faith. Yeah, we got to hold fast to our confession of faith and other passages in, in the scripture said, Lord, help me. Help me with my unbelief. Help me to hold fast to my confession of faith. Uh, help me not to allow the things of the human race or the things that in my humanness uh, mess up my faith of my spirit. Let me be able to hold fast in my spirit of uh, the thing that you have said uh, 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 and, and be able to fight off the flesh of the thing that is seen in the world. I say it like that because the temptation comes when we see this and we see that and we begin to wonder. 
we need to hold fast to our confession of faith. Because he said that every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his, what? Own lust and enticed. That simply means that what your mind perceives, how you perceive the thing, draws you away from what you ought to be. So if you put your mind on Christ and hold fast uh, uh, to him, you won't be drawn away in your own lust and entice. So we'll be able to hold on to God's unchanging hand. We'll be able to cast down evil, evil desires and the, and, and the things that allure us into sin. We'll be able to cast them aside. Amen. Charlene, if you will, 15 through 27. Nyla, cut on number four. Number four is not. Hello. There we go. There we go. Thank you. James 1, chapter 1, verse 15. Then when desire he conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of fruit, first fruits of his creatures. Therefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But, be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. If anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and defiled, Religion from before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Amen. As James continued to talk here in this first chapter, we see that he said, when lust have conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And when sin is finished, it brings forth death. So you have to understand that to cast down vain imaginations when you're being tempted, you need to call on the Lord to take those thoughts and, and, and ideas away from you because no man makes you sin. Man may suggest it. The enemy may, may suggest that you sin. But sin is always the decision that each individual makes. I hope y'all understand that. Every sin was the decision that you made. You made that decision. You're a free my agent. You have the right to say yay or nay. So you make that decision. Or, or somebody may be trying to force you to do something that, and it may cause you some pain if you don't do it. But your decision is yours. 
hold fast to your confession of faith. He tells uh, he tells us not to err. Cause every good gift, cause God always give good gifts. He only give good gifts. God doesn't give us bad gifts. So I go back to that. God put that on me. That's the thing that 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 may happen to you. That God didn't put it on you. Yeah, we may he may allow it to like he did with Job, but he didn't put it on him. He didn't put it on you either. Because every good and every perfect gift come from above. Come down from God. He said, the light with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. God doesn't change. His word is still true. We still have to hold fast to his word. Then he says, of his own will be, of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruit of his creation, of his creatures rather. We who are saved, who accepted him, should be examples to others how they should walk. So we have an obligation or responsibility to carry ourselves in the manner that God desires us to carry so that we don't give people the wrong impression. We don't want to give people the wrong impression. We know that we must hold fast. And then he says, this is very important for us in the 19th verse. He says that, that, that beloved brethren, let every man be what? We have to hear. Open up them two ears and listen. And then he said, you should be what? Slow, Slow to speak. speak. Don't just run off at the mouth. Be slow to speak. You need to hear, analyze, before you respond. Don't just go running off. That's how some folks, they just go rubbing off. They don't even hear what you say. You may be saying something positive, but their mind is in a negative uh, realm, and they didn't run it off the, all the whole way. And you say, I didn't say that. You didn't hear me. You know, and sometimes you get the first part, but you don't get the second part, or the whole of the matter. That's why we need to be slow to speak, so that uh, uh, swift to hear, slow to speak, so that we can get the whole of the matter. Then he says, slow the wrath. Don't allow yourself to get upset and get mad real quick. Because you'll lose your focus. You'll lose your focus. He said, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. If I allow myself to get upset at everything, I need to be aware and conscious. But I don't need to go off the deep end on every matter. I need to think that thing through and hear what God is saying, how to work it out. And, and, and anybody agree with that? We need to be able to work it out and see how God wants us to do rather than just react. I always tell folk, don't, don't react to what folks say, but stop and think. And then you don't react to it, but you act according to the will of God. There's a difference in reacting and acting according to the will of God. We don't react to what folks say. We act according to the will of God. He said, for the wrath of the man working not the righteousness of God, while for lay aside all filthiness and severity of daughterness and, and receive with meekness and graft the word which is able to what? Save your soul. Get into this word and listen to this word and apply this word. 22 is very important too. We, uh, in 21, he encouraged us in our salvation, in our meekness uh, uh, to accept God. 
In 22, he said you ought to be a doer of the word and not hearers only. We need to be able to apply this word to our everyday life. This word is not just a Sunday word, it's an everyday word. And we need to be able to apply it to our everyday life. Y'all hear me? We need to be able to apply it to our everyday life. He said that, 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 that in 22, not to be hearers only, because if we're hearers only, it's that deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face and a glass, looking at yourself and getting caught up on you. And we need to be caught up on God. What do God say? We need to be applying this word according to his will, not according to what we want. Don't change it to fit your circumstance. Change to fit the word. Change to fit the word. And he goes on to say, For he beholdeth himself and goes his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. You forgot you got saved. You forgot you gave your life to Christ. I think that happened a lot in the pandemic, that a lot of folk forgot that they were connected to God. And they were fearing the world. They were fearing the world and forgot they were connected to God. My God covers me with his grace, his mercy, his understanding. He healeth me. For his word say he will do that. And so we must apply this word to our everyday, not just hear it, but we must apply to the Every day. Don't forget that you are saved by grace through faith. And that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. God saved us uh, by his finished work. 25. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein, he bring not, he, he, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deed. When you apply that word to your everyday, it brings about blessings to you. Blessings are not all and always monetary. Because some folks think the only way you're blessed is monetarily, you know. I got my money to give me a house. I got enough money to give me a car. I got enough to put in the bank to save and buy me whatever I want to buy. Some folks think that's the only way blessings come. But he blessed you with health. He blessed you with favor. You know, he blessed you with good sense. So let me just say it that way. That's a blessing. And he says, if any man among you seem to be religious and brighteth not his tongue, uh-oh, we not, should not be folk who just run off at the mouth, but deceiveth his own heart, this man religious is in vain. Made up his own stuff. Vain talk, you know, evil speaking. We need to be able to restrain this tongue of ours. And that last verse says, pure religion, and pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. To keep himself unspotted from the world. And we need to remember that we cannot allow the world, world to take charge of us. That God is in charge. And no matter what the world is doing, our focus must be on God. 
and we must hold fast to our focus on God. If we're not holding fast to our focus on God, the world will change us. We take lessons from the nation, and God told them, when you go into the land, don't go to doing what them folks in the land doing. That's why he told them to clear it out. And when they didn't clear it out, they started what? Acting like them folks that was in the land. They took up their customs and all that kind of stuff. And so we have to be careful that we don't take up the custom of the world. And I'm gonna say it like this. We have world leaders but they're leading us in worldly things. God, Christ, is our spiritual leader. He is the one that we must follow. And when the world is not lining up with the word, we must cut the world off and walk with the word. That may offend a few folk. It may upset somebody. But we must hold fast to the confession of our faith. We cannot appease sin. Anybody agree with me? Amen. We can't just go along with sin. Because that's what they want to do. I can't make them not do that. But I cannot accept that. For me and my house, the words say, we will serve the Lord. That's Old Testament. I know, I know, and some folks get upset because it's Old Testament. But we learn from the Old Testament as well as from the New. And so if you're going to love God and you're truly saved, you're going to respond to his will and not your will or the worldly will. So we must be careful of what we allow into our space, into our presence. We must check those politicians out. We have to vote. And we must check those who are running out. Because some of our motive is not for the people. Some of our motive is simply for themselves. And if we're not careful, we will see that later on if we don't pay attention to those in whom we elect. We're going through a whole lot of stuff now on the national level and on the local level, on the state level, because we have not paid attention to those in whom we elect. We got to be more diligent about who we elect into these offices. We Why need nobody that, that 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 that's a, that that's a thing. And sometimes we have to step up and make a decision to step in. And we know that when we do that, it's going to be a fight. Because we're going to be challenged in our faith. But we must hold fast to our faith. We must hold fast to our faith. I'm not a politician. But I'm looking at these races. And I'm looking at these people who are running. And I'm, I'm, I'm asking God to give me wisdom as to the what, the why, and the how. What their, what, what, their, what their ideology is, I'm looking at them. Some of them I just think is there for that extra dollar. You know, because most of them locals, they got jobs, right? And so they just make, this is their second job. They make extra money. Well, come Mike, you got something. Yes, yeah, I wonder, the mindset of the people, they don't want to put those guys up negative people in there, the haters in the office. What are their mindset is what majority of the people are. A lot of people, million of people voted for people like that. They have yeah. a negative attitude, hate attitude toward um, the masses of the people trying to get in office. I'm blaming the people to put them in there. Why yeah. they vote for people like that? They vote for like kind. You got a lot of folk who hate 
that's just the matter. They hate. And when they see somebody that 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 exemplifies their principles, they will vote for them regardless of what they're doing. When the man said that I could kill somebody and wouldn't lose the boat. You know, that's a red flag right there. That's a red flag right there. Because he said, I got these so folks so much in my pocket that they will not pay attention to anything I do. And he had that mentality that these folks, you know, and we've got to, we got to step up. We got to go to the poll. We got to vote in good people and vote out bad folks. Vote out bad folks. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. This is a powerful chapter. We're going to stop that. It's the opening of the book of James. Uh, there, there are a lot of things here. Trials, the value of trials, the source of wisdom, unwavered in faith is, is essential. He lets us know. You know, uh, uh, changeable circumstances, holding fast our confession of faith. And so he says that we must be hearers of the words and hearers of the words and doers of the word. Not only hearers, but also doers of the word. We must be able to apply to our everyday life. And he says, don't get caught up in yourself. Don't get caught up in yourself. It's all about Christ and walking in his will and in his way. True and false religion he talks about at the end of this chapter. Pure religion, undefiled before God and the Father, he says. And he tells us what we should be looking at. Amen. In this area. So we have to keep ourselves pure and away from the world. Unworldliness should be a part of the Christian life. Not worldliness, but unworldliness, if you can say that word. We need to hold fast our confession of faith. Amen. Amen. Let me take a moment to thank everybody for the great celebration Amen. that we had on our 34th um, ministry anniversary. The ministry has been together for 34 years, starting on this 35th year. And we are thankful and grateful to God that he has kept us thus far. And our prayer is that he will continue to hold us, and we know that he will. All we have to do is stay focused on him, because he changes not. Amen. If he were with us at the beginning, he's still with us. Amen. If he helped us at the beginning, he's still helping us. And so we must hold fast to our confession of faith. Yes, we've got a little older, but we should have got a little wiser as well. And so we can train and teach our younger people to hold fast to their confession of faith. We, are, we have, are the older have been through some things. And we can encourage our younger to hold fast to their confession of faith because they're going to go through some things as well. But God will be with them. And, and we're so grateful for all of those who work so hard, so diligently uh, to make this a, a special occasion. And I'm thankful. I thank all of you. I thank God for you. And I ask them to keep you as our prayer. Remember our services began with church school at the 9.15 hour and, and, and regular worship experience at the 10.30 hour. And when there is a special day, we'll be at, back at the 3 o'clock hour. Our next special day function, as far as I know right now, is family and friends. Second Sunday of next month. That's a month away. Prepare yourself to come. Bring somebody with you. Amen. Amen. We ask that our membership uh, to ask somebody to come along. Uh, if they don't, you know, you can't make them, but make the effort. 
and we thank you for the effort that you will make. We appreciate it. Amen. 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 God is moving by his spirit. He's still in charge. He's still in control. He's still blessing. So I thank you so very much for your support. Father, we give ourselves unto you in totality. Use us as you will. Make us, mold us to what you would have us to be. We surrender all. All to you we give. We thank you right now that you bless those whose bodies are feeble. Bless those who are afflicted. Bless those who are incarcerated. Bless those who have not yet made a decision but will make a decision for you. Let them know that you are real in their lives and you have kept them thus far even though they don't know who have kept them. Uh, let them understand that it was you. We thank you for that right now. Bless this ministry, bless this neighborhood, bless every ministry that is established in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank y'all so much for tuning in. We will do the second chapter next week, the book of James. Amen. amen. The epistle of James. And so uh, we look forward to seeing you. Amen. Have a good night and a good day on tomorrow and a good week. Good night.